My hope for the youth of today is that when planning for the future, we do so by having an open mind, being adaptable, creative, and resilient. And I hope that in the process, we learn to collaborate with each other and support one another so that we can move forward together as one Jama. Hi, Yali Madat. Assalamu alaikum. My name is Javid. Um, looking to the future uh, with strength for, for the youth. Um, I think it's almost cliche to say because there's nothing that we can do to move forward without building a strong foundation, and that is investing energy in development and education of our youth, but um, not just in formal ways, but also through mentorship, through apprenticeship, passing on traditions, and understanding the meaning and significance of the things that we do, particularly in the Islamic context, so that um, certain art forms, traditions in our music, dance, fashion, these things are not overlooked just for the um, education and the secular studies, secular realm. Um, so for me, it means creativity and understanding what the tradition in our tariqa really means. My name is Imad and I'm excited to be one of your counselors for Odyssey X Civic happening next week. Looking to the future with strength means having trust in our youth and building capacity for them to be effective future leaders and inculcating the values of positivity in them to make this world a better place. Thank you so much. See you all there at the camp. When I think about looking to our future with strength, the first thought that comes to mind is having our health. Health that we can rely on to achieve whatever we aspire to, health that allows us to enjoy time with those we love, and health that allows us to serve our imam, our brothers and sisters, and our planet. And I think that food, the foods we enjoy, foods that are healthy, how we eat those foods, and who we eat with is foundational to having our health. Who doesn't like board games? Many of us grew up playing them, and you know, if you're like me, you still play them today. But have you ever wanted to create your own game? My name is Safiz Printer. I'm a teacher, uh, a nerd, and I'm also a board game designer. Uh, these are some cards from a few of my upcoming games. And uh, join me at Odyssey this year, where we're going to explore how you can create your own board game, how we can do that together. I'll share some tips and tricks that I've learned along the way to help take your idea from an idea to an actual game. Um, I'm excited to hear about all the different ideas you have and to just you know nerd out about board games. So. Uh, Looking forward to seeing you at Camp Odyssey. Hi, it's Yali Madat, and welcome. My name is Diana Visaya, and I have the absolute honor of being your host for the opening ceremonies for the first ever Odyssey and Ismaili Civic. Now, you may have heard of Odyssey, that week-long virtual camp held earlier this year, which some of you even attended, and you've probably heard of Civic, Ismailis around the world volunteering within their local communities. But what you probably haven't heard of until very recently is Odyssey and Civic, this very cool and very short mashup of the two programs. So let me break this down for you. So we still have all the cool parts of camp, like bringing youth together from across Canada to learn new skills, make new friends, and build a very special community. And then, you get to go out into your own local communities to make a difference in the lives of others. Wow, neat, hey? So are you excited to get started? Me too. Okay, so let's dive right in. Looking to the future with strength. What does that mean to you? To me, it's a call to action to learn all that we can do today to ensure that we're equipped to contribute to a better tomorrow. Now we are very fortunate to have a number of incredible mentors, some of whom you heard from right before me, that have put together amazing workshops, seminars, and panels for you tomorrow to help you learn and grow so you can be more confident as you look to the future. And two very special people who embody that confidence and who have done a whole lot of work to get us all organized, like a lot, a lot of work, are up next and they cannot wait to meet you. No, it's true, they told me. Okay, Shazi and Rahim are our program directors for this whole entire weekend. So let's send it over to them to formally kick things off. Yali Madad, 
We are so excited to welcome you to the kickoff of Odyssey Coordinated Programming of the Ismaili Institutions for Canada. My name is Raheem Lalji and I'm a step teacher from Toronto and I'm honored to be serving as one of the co-program managers for Odyssey. And my name is Shazia Munji, also a step teacher from Toronto and I have had the pleasure of working alongside Raheem as co-program manager for Odyssey. So Shazia, Odyssey is a new program for the youth in the Canadian Jamaat. We should probably tell them a little more detail about what it actually is. You're right. So, you know, Odyssey is a platform to bring youth together from across the country and to stay connected through programs, camps, lounges, social activities, and many others. It's a way for us to connect with each other and connect with ideas, passion, and purpose that's bigger than any of us individually. That's right, Shazia, the possibilities are endless. And you know what I love about Odyssey? It gives us an opportunity to engage with a diversity of cultures, ways of thinking, ideas, and people so that our youth can experience what it really means to be a citizen of the world. The programs that we have planned throughout the Odyssey year will build skills and competencies in our youth to empower them to be leaders in areas of their interests and passions and to engage in the world as Khalifas, doing our part to make the world of tomorrow better than the world of today. That reminds me of the theme of this Odyssey Meets a Smiley Civic kickoff weekend. The Canadian Ismaili institutions have partnered with the Ismaili Civic Initiative to design high quality programming around our theme of looking to the future with strength. Through opportunities of self-development, personal growth, social interaction, and civic engagement, we are aiming to empower youth across Canada to live the values of our faith beyond the borders of our community and touch every corner of the country with the ethic of service as they connect with the communities where they live, work, learn, and play. We also want to continue our Odyssey journey by acquainting our youth with skills, knowledge, and mentorship that exists in our Jamaat across Canada by connecting participants with inspiring individuals who have set in motion their own personal vision of how they can make a positive impact on the communities where they live. We hope throughout this evening's activities, you will have an opportunity to meet youth across the country to brainstorm what does it mean to look to the future with hope and strength and share in the excitement of the upcoming weekend. Tomorrow, participants will have an opportunity to engage in over 50 exciting workshops and meet and greet seminars with leading Ismaili young professionals that are using their skills and passions to change the world. This is a great opportunity to learn a new skill, develop your passion, and learn about pathways to careers and opportunities of young professionals that started out right where you are. Our weekend culminates on Sunday, where you will have an opportunity to carry forward the experiences and learnings from this weekend and put it into action. Join the Global Jamaat from around the world as we participate in Global Ismaili Civic Day 2021. Ismaili Civic Day will harness the potential and capacity of tens of thousands of volunteers serving hundreds of thousands of beneficiaries around the world with passion, energy and enthusiasm while working alongside governments and civil society organizations to enrich lives. Finally, we would like to take a moment to acknowledge all of the incredible volunteers, institutional partners, workshop leads and Odyssey team. There have been so many people that have generously given of their time and knowledge to contribute to making this weekend an incredible experience for our participants and this truly embodies the ethics of service and care inspired by our faith. Be sure to get yourself ready for the entire weekend. Make sure you've got your water bottle, a notebook, some pens and pencils, grab some candy and some chocolate, but of course, grab some healthy snacks too. And if you've got one of these limited edition Odyssey t-shirts, make sure you're representing it. Make sure to come with a positive attitude, an open mind and an open heart. By connecting with each other and working together as a community, learning new skills, exploring inspiration, socializing and developing friendships, and partaking in acts of service. 
together we can look to the future with strength. Share your journey throughout the weekend on social with hashtag ride, ride the wave. wave. Hey you, are you feeling more inspired now than ever before? Yeah, I'm talking to you because I know I am. So a big, big thank you to the Shazia and Rahim for their words of wisdom. Now, if you were part of Camp Odyssey, you may remember a beautiful rendition of the national anthem sung by my friend, Neela Makani of Calgary, and she's back for an encore to go along with just a few examples of the amazing work Canadian Smileys have done over the course of the pandemic. And now, for your listening pleasure, here is our national anthem. Oh, Canada, a home and native land, true patriot love, in all of us command, yet on Ross, a portal of Nahidenshi, Mayor of Calgary, Yalimada. It's my pleasure to spend a few moments with you today as we think about this important question of where is our future and the role that young people can play in building that stronger future. This has been a rough couple of years and here as everywhere we're facing I would say five simultaneous earth-shattering life-changing crises. Of course we're in a public health pandemic. We're also fa facing a mental health and addictions crisis. We're facing an economic crisis brought on, but not entirely caused by the pandemic. Of course, we're facing an environmental and a climate crisis. And we're also coming to a reckoning in this place on what I call issues of equity. How do we move from a place that is justifiably proud, that we are pluralistic, that we are diverse, that we are multicultural, to a place that is truly anti-racist? How do we move from recognizing what has happened to Indigenous peoples in this country through reconciliation to true action to improve the lives of Indigenous and non-Indigenous people? How do we address questions of income inequity and poverty in our communities? So it sounds like a lot, and it is a lot, but I also believe that we are at a point of transition a point where we have the chance to create a brand new future. It looked different than where we've been, and that's scary because we don't know what it will look like. But ultimately, it is our opportunity to create something more just, something more equitable, something more cons conserving, conserving of the environment, and a place where people have economic uh, opportunity and prosperity. And that's a big challenge because a lot of us who are a little bit older don't really know where we're going. We kind of know the destination, but we don't know the journey. We don't know the path to get there. And that's why we're relying on young people to really be able to lead us through this. So I'll tell you one thing I don't like. I don't like when people talking to young people say, you are leaders of tomorrow. Because it's not true. You're not. You are and have the capacity and opportunity to be leaders right here, right now, today. Leaders in your school, in your jamaat, in your community, and in the world. Because ultimately all action, all change, starts with people who are passionate about making the change. 
So over the course of this camp and over the course of the next little while, I want you to think about two questions. The first one is, what am I passionate about? What drives me? What is important to me? The second is, what am I good at? What skills do I bring? Or what can I learn to bring better skills? And where those two things intersect, what am I passionate about? What am I good at? That is your power. That is your source of strength. That is your ability to make real change. You know, some years ago when I first became mayor, I launched a program called Three Things for Calgary. It later became Three Things for Canada. And it's a very simple program and I encourage you to think about it in your own lives. All it is, is encouraging every single citizen every year to do at least three acts of service, or as I always say, three acts of seva, of selfless service. They could be something very small. Shovel your neighbor's walk, mow their lawn. They could be something big, start a new environmental club at your school, or anything in between. All that matters is that we are using our own power to try and make change. You know, one of the very first uh, places to adopt three things was a school in downtown Calgary. And I wasn't expecting schools really to adopt this program. I was thinking of it more as something for adults. So I went to the school to see what they were up to. And when I got to the school, they had covered the entire school in numbers, big number threes made of paper that they had written their three actions on. And we had an assembly. And at that assembly, a kindergarten student who happened to be an Ismaili kindergarten student talked about the three things that she was doing. And the one I remember the most is she said, you know, there's a new girl in my class and she doesn't speak much English. I later found out this school was one of the first schools in Canada to adopt a refugee family from Syria. She doesn't speak much English and she, I'm not sure she understands what the teacher is saying. So I invited her to my house for a play date so that she can make some friends here. That was before COVID. And I sit next to her and I try to act out what the teacher is saying so she understands. And I thought, geez, if a kindergarten student understands the meaning of seva, the meaning of service, the meaning of being a seva dadi, someone who gives service, then we can all get it. And ultimately, I think that's your challenge and your opportunity to use you know, change doesn't happen because politicians make speeches. It happens because every single one of us makes it happen. No one is too young, no one is too small, no one is too weak, no one's voice is too quiet to make real change happen. And that's what I encourage you to do because the world changes because we make a change. Everyday people with our everyday hands and our everyday voices leading to real change. So over the course of this camp, think about that. How can you use your hands, your heart, your mind, your soul, and especially your voice to create a better world for everybody? Have a great Camp Odyssey, everyone. Now, I know big world issues like COVID-19 and climate change are scary. We all feel that way, but this weekend is your opportunity to learn from others and be inspired to make an impact. And not just on Sunday when we go out to volunteer, but to leave a legacy. Actually, speaking of legacies and making an impact, we have got a special performance for you all the way from Pakistan. Without giving away too much, the shadow dancers are able to tell a full story without saying a word. Spoiler alert, you're gonna love it. Following that, you're gonna get to hear from Dr. Izzy Hirji, a Toronto-born wildlife veterinarian, environmentalist, and conservationist. He currently serves as a relief vet in exotic animal and emergency medicine and works with international wildlife rescue organizations specializing in primates. He's a strong advocate for environmental sustainability and animal rights who dabbles in wildlife photography in his spare time. Wow, what can't he do? Okay, let's stop monkeying around and get on with it.
Hello. In our culture, we say Yali Madat, but today I bring you the greetings of the animal kingdom, courtesy of the chimpanzee. I want to tell you a story, a story of a little girl named Jackie and a boy named Abraham. We are in the mountains of Freetown, Sierra Leone, West Africa, at the Takugama Chimpanzee Sanctuary. We receive a tip that a baby chimpanzee is being held illegally in a nearby town, and we are authorized to send in a rescue team. Our rescue team drives out there and is told that there is a baby being held, but nobody will give up her exact location. Abraham lives in the village and comes to greet us and says he knows where she is being held. He leads us down a path to a concrete bathroom stall and where inside we find Jackie, chained to the sink, skinny, dehydrated, and horribly weak. She arrives to the sanctuary at night with a crowd of bright lights and cameras waiting for her. We discover that she has a horrible diarrhea and diagnosed her with amoebic dysentery. She was given to Mama Pose, who raises all the orphans that arrive, over 200 in the last 25 years, and allowed to rest. But she wouldn't eat anything other than mangoes. I tried everything. Jackie was one of the most stubborn orphans. She was just getting weaker and weaker until one day she dug into a cucumber. What a happy day. <laughs> she wouldn't touch her milk though, despite all sorts of goodies we added to entice her. So for weeks, she only lived off of mangoes and cucumbers, not a complete diet. Building a bond takes a long time, but after about a month, she finally decided to try the milk, took her meds, and never looked back. Jackie's rescue eventually became the feature of a National Geographic documentary. Fast forward a few years, and Jackie is now introduced into a group of adults in the forest and is a glutton who steals any and all types of food from all the infants and is even overweight. The real story here, though, is about so much more than Jackie. Jackie's story is a routine occurrence. Sadly, orphans show up at the doorstep on an almost monthly basis. For every orphan, at least 10 chimps are killed to capture them, as they live in large forest groups that will always protect the babies. And it's often illegal deforestation that creates roads for hunters to access the forest in the first place. Sanctuaries exist across Africa to deal with the result of the problem. Though the goal is not just to give these animals a home when confiscated, but to stop the wildlife trade at the source. Many are engaged in conservation research, forest protection, and most importantly, education. This is where Abraham comes in. We eventually learned why Abraham helped us. His school was part of our education program where he learned how important chimpanzees are to the forest and how important forests are for our future. This message stuck with him years later. And when Jackie showed up in his village, he defied all the adults and saved her beautiful and precious life. Abraham is the real hero here. From a young age, I too, like many children, loved animals and knew I wanted to work with them. I was fascinated by wildlife and wanted to save endangered species and the places in which they lived. Fast forward to high school, where an anthropology project reintroduced me to Jane Goodall, whose kids' books I actually grew up reading. And serendipitously, I ended up reading her book, Reason for Hope. My heart just exploded. I read every book she ever wrote about the chimps she studied, her life journey, and her spiritual connection to the natural world. I wanted to be her, to follow in her footsteps. But how? I was just a boy from Toronto with a passion to save the environment. Lo and behold, she came to Toronto that very year and I was fortunate enough to meet her. That set me on my path to joining her youth organization, Roots and Shoots, starting a group of my own in university, and working with several other environmental groups. We ran sustainability campaigns and even got our entire campus to go bottled water free 
and undergo a $10 million energy retrofit. Another of her books started me on my path to veganism, and what an empowering path to follow. For the first time in my life, I could live true to my values, living a life free of harm to the animals I so love, who have feelings and emotions just like us. And three times a day, I was making the single biggest personal impact an individual can make for the climate and my carbon footprint. I managed to get into veterinary school knowing that I would use my degree to help endangered wildlife around the world, but not knowing I'd be the only one in my class to be fully committed to pursuing this, and surprisingly, the only vegan. It was a lonely road without much academic or emotional support. And I found myself constantly standing up against the establishment, speaking out for the animals and the planet we share in a place where I thought I would be supported. But this taught me a few important life lessons. Always stand up for your values while being open and respectful to hearing other perspectives. After all, it's often the heretics that change the world. Change your views when something resonates with you so that you can constantly be evolving into the best version of yourself that you can be. A few years later, I'm doing what I dreamed of doing despite so many people telling me it wasn't possible. Traveling the world, living in the jungle, working with wildlife rescues, and helping to educate the next generation of stewards to protect what we are so blessed with on this planet. It all culminated when Jane Goodall herself visited our sanctuary for the first time in 2019, and I was able to meet her, not in Toronto, but in the forest, in the presence of the very chimpanzees I cared for, and praising our work. Looking to the future, all it takes is one individual with a voice to make a change. A change in someone's life, human or non-human, or a change on a global scale. We have incredible leaders in our community, with Molabapa setting the example of making the world a better place for humanity, and his children following in his footsteps. Prince Hussein is fighting to save the oceans that produce 70% of our oxygen. And Prince Ali Muhammad is fighting climate change and helping those most affected by it. These are the issues of our generation. Look to our leaders with determination and find the passion and fire within that fuels you. There is so much you can do if you just have hope. You are the future. And every individual has the power to make a difference, just like Abraham. Whew, thank you, Izzy. Did you all enjoy that? Same. Now, between Nahid and Izzy, I know you're inspired to not only learn, but also to, you know, get out there. So look, Sunday is not just any ordinary Ismaili volunteer day. No, no, no. Sunday marks the first global Ismaili Civic Day where we, as a global Jamaat, are all going to volunteer together. That's right, we are joining 20,000 other Ismailis around the world, serving 100,000 hours on projects related to pandemic relief and environmental stewardship. Wow, that is a big deal. Okay, while I let that sink in, I want to introduce to you the very last thing on our agenda today. Any guesses? The Odyssey theme song. Yes, you don't think we forgot, did you? Now, this song was written for and about you in both English and French. How Canadian. Now, you may recognize the singer-songwriter from various global Ismaili programs over the years. Okay, before I sign off, I did want to say thank you for participating in Odyssey and Ismaili Civic. As you go through this journey over the course of the weekend, I encourage you to really take advantage of this opportunity and soak up as much knowledge as you can. Now, enjoy all the activities planned for you this weekend, and I will see you soon. But first, presenting the one and only, my girl, Faramita. Oh, and if you know the dance, do it. Okay, bye. Patches.
Let's catch us if you can. We're soaring through our.